Yo, what's up guys? Andy here with another episode of Tap Lab. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an animated photo using Plotograph. I've created one video on this before. It did really well, so I wanted to do an update to that video. Plotograph has updated their app a bunch, so it's way different now. So I just want to give the updated version. And in this video, we're going to be animating a waterfall. So basically with Plotograph, you can take any still photo and turn it into sort of an animation or a video. So let's jump right into that. The first thing that I did here is went in my web browser. I went to unsplash.com. I just searched a photo of a waterfall. So I just searched for waterfall and we're going to use this one. So let me just save this real quick. Save image. And then we're going to go ahead and open up Plotograph, which is now called Plotiverse. And you'll see right away that the app is way different. It's kind of cluttered now. It's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. But what we want to do down here in the bottom center, you want to hit this plus sign. And then it's going to give you two options. You can post. I don't even know where this post would go to. There's like, this app is just confusing, to be honest. But you want to hit create photograph. And here are all the photographs that I've created already. Let's see if I can give you an example of what these do. So let me open up this one real quick we'll hit play. So you can see in this one, I created an animation where the background moves. So basically we're gonna do this same effect, but we're gonna apply it to a waterfall. So I'm gonna hit the plus in the bottom center again, and open up my camera roll and select this photo that I downloaded here. So we're gonna go over quickly how to create a photograph and what all these tools are down here on the bottom and how to use them. Some of them you'll pretty much never need to use. Some of them you'll use all the time. So crop, I would never do that here. I'll do that in a different app. You can go back and forward in these things with these X and check mark towards the bottom of the screen. And this design, I don't even know what they're thinking. Let's just hop right into an animation. So I'm gonna hit the animate button, animate icon in the tab bar. We can take our finger and we can draw arrows. Oh, they still have that stupid zoom feature. This circle zoom, like it doesn't even zoom in really. It just, it's just distracting. You can see, you can take, you're gonna select the starting point. You're gonna leave your finger on the screen and you're gonna drag in the direction that you want this to animate in. So basically we want all of these going downward. Now I've created some large and some small. If I mess up like that one, I accidentally made it pointing up. We can hit the back icon at the top of this screen. So I'm gonna go back a lot. I'm just gonna like start over. So that's sort of how you would create the animation. But first, what we wanna do is mask. So we're gonna mask out, I'm gonna mask out everything and we can change the size right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mask the whole screen. So basically the animation will only appear in the part that isn't masked. You can see that we were on the paintbrush, the left side of this mask, and over on the right side is the eraser. Paintbrush, eraser. So now I'm gonna take this eraser. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller here. I'm basically gonna, gonna color out this waterfall area. We can also take our fingers and pinch on the screen. So you can pinch and zoom to like zoom into wherever you want here. So I'm basically gonna just paint out this waterfall. That's what I'm doing right now. See like this spot, this this extra circle thing is just annoying. Like it's just in the way. And then I'm gonna paint again. I'm basically just gonna keep painting and erasing until I get this perfect. Okay, so that's looking decent. Now let's go ahead and add this animation. So I'm gonna use really small arrows. From my experience, that just works the best. Like it's gonna make the smoothest, cleanest animation if you use small arrows. I'll show you for example real quick. If I, if I do a long arrow like that, we can hit the play button down here in the bottom center at any time to sort of test it out. You'll see that the long arrow is a little weird, but up here towards the top, it's a little smoother, it's a little cleaner. I'm gonna slow the speed down quite a bit. Let's keep it on one there. So that looks that looks pretty nice. Actually, I think we could do a little bit longer arrows towards the center of this, and maybe some shorter ones at the top and bottom to make it look best. So the anchor tool, honestly, I don't even know what it does. I've never used it. I've never seen a purpose in using it. So I don't recommend using it. If you wanna change any of these arrows, you can go to the select tool 
And then you can select these and sort of change the length if you want to do that. So we'll use about that length towards the middle here. And we can see these ones kind of go to the side a little bit. Okay, so let's test that out and see how it looks. And that's looking really good actually. I really like that. I think that's looking almost perfect. I feel like the only weird spot is over here on the right side of this waterfall. I think that's just a masking issue. So you can play around with the mask um, a little bit and see like that's definitely worse. So I'm going to undo that. But I think there's some smaller spots here where it could be a little better. So that looks pretty good. I think that looks I think that looks pretty good there. And then of course when you're playing it, you have the ability to adjust the speed. So it's really up to you to decide the speed. So like that's super fast. I generally like mine slower, so like one. Kind of like it's in slow motion. And that's pretty much all the tools that you need. So you're going to use animate, you're going to use the eraser slash mask. You're not going to really need anchor. You can use the select to change these a little bit. If you hit edit, that will allow you to change like the settings within the photo. I honestly just recommend doing that in a different app. They have too much stuff in this app. You don't really need to edit in this app. They should just keep it for just animation. The crop, again, I'll do that in a separate app before you before you do this. They have FX overlays, so you could add something like that. I honestly haven't tested these out yet. I think it's more of a feature so that they could sell add-ons. So I'm not gonna do any of those. And that's pretty much it. Once you have an animation that you like, you can hit the button in the top right corner, and then you can sort of export that however you want and hit custom. Um, so I can do it the max size that I want. I can select the duration that I want. So six seconds, that's good with me. Hit save to camera roll. That's how I'll do it. I'll do the custom, just save it as max. Save it as the duration that you want and you're good to go. And it says export save to camera roll. I can hit OK. And then I could go over to Instagram. Let's say I wanted to post it there. Hit the add photo button and there it is. I could of course hit next and add whatever filters and stuff I wanted from there if I wanted to add that. But there you have it, a quick overview of how to use the updated Plotograph slash Plotiverse app. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Be sure to drop a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll try and answer those. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for daily videos and drop a like on this video if it helped you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.